Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros and one of the first in the Parrot Bros garage, 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 uh, workshop, unit, storage container, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> now, this is a question I actually get asked quite a lot and I thought I'd make a whole video about it because it's definitely going to save you some time, some money and possibly some aggro in the future. And that is the rebuilding of the underside of the car. Now, um, these cars do have quite a lot underneath and they do like a surface rust, especially if you're based in the UK and we have salt on the roads probably eight months of the year. Um, if you're in Scotland, as much or more. Um, and of course, abroad, it, you may get lucky and not have any at all. Um, but I wanted to talk through how I would recommend doing it because I get questions all the time saying, can you recommend a garage who can rebuild all the underside of my car? because a lot of garages don't want to do it. Now, the reason for that is because as soon as they take your subframe off, front or rear, um, obviously on the rear, it takes off the whole rear end, which then immobilizes your car on their ramp. Now, if you think every garage, um, a ramp, will say for argument's sake, 100 pounds, it's probably a little bit less, but most garages earn eight hours, 100 pounds an hour out of their ramps. And if your car goes on there for three hours, they take all the stuff off and then it's sat there, it's dead money. They're not earning money until all your parts have been shot blasted, powder code, which could be a few days. Um, so there's a few ways about going about it. Also, we'll discuss checking some bushes and the different kinds of subframes because you don't want to get caught out um, <laughs> with that also. But before we get stuck into it, let's jump into the intro. Okay, so corrosion is quite a big deal um, and it's something that obviously a lot of you want to deal with going forwards. Now, if you look at this rear trailing arm, for instance, it's not too bad. This is actually one of my spares. I mean, you can see there, there's some flaky rot, um, but it's not actually that bad. Again, front arm, not too bad. This subframe is definitely at the right point in which to do something about it. You can see it's not too bad. There's definitely no holes in it or anything, but there's some surface rust around the outer edges um, and on the corners, but nothing that structurally affects this. Now, this one I took off of my noggy, I believe, um, and actually snapped one of the studs. So that is unfortunately one of the issues the dog bones um, can break, um, but not the end of the world. We can definitely get that out because there's plenty to, uh, to bite onto there. Uh, let's have a quick look underside the car. Now, this is just a farm car. So this has done 175,000 miles. It's a V-Reg, so one of the oldest. And as you can see, everything looks between brown and cream, cream being the mud, brown being the rust. Um, and what you would usually do is you would look at swapping both of those arms, which is this one and the one above. You'd also do the trailing arm, which is the one I showed you on the floor over there, and this rear subframe here. Now, obviously, once you've taken that off, like I said, it immobilizes the car, you're gonna take the wheels off, you're gonna take all the suspension components off and everything. So, um, not the easiest of jobs for any garage because it's gonna be sat there for ages. Um, there is also other things to consider, like this is missing one, the arm that goes between here and this set switch above, which is your headlight adjustment angle sensor, um, <laughs> clearly missing. Um, and also things you may wanna consider whilst doing this job is things like your tank straps, the strap, the hold, your fuel tank on, because the last thing you want is your fuel tank straps rusting and falling off. Um, but basically, the way I would go about this is a few options. Now, if your car isn't too bad, um, if your car isn't too bad and you don't feel like it's got loads of flaky rust and you can pick it off um, in, in sections, then you'll probably call it early enough to just treat it. Now, there is loads of products out there um, there's ones that you can literally just mix up, paint on. There's different ones like Curus, there's powders that you can put with a liquid and then you brush it on, leave it for say a day, a day or two, and then it basically reverses the reaction from the rust, turns it back to metal. Obviously first you have to wire brush all the excess off. Um, like on these, you could just wire off the excess, not so much of a problem. Um, once you've done the excess, you can put this product on. I'll list a few down in the description for you to have a look at. There's loads out there, relatively cheap to do, um, probably less than 30 pounds to treat all the rust. Um, so it's very worthwhile and it turns it from brown to black. Once you've obviously scuffed off all the dirt, get a good brush, I mean, get down there with a hose, you know what I mean, and a brush, give it all a good clean off, then get a wire brush and just take off any of the flaky stuff because at the end of the day, if it's flaky, it's already loose. Um, once you've done that, treat it for the rust, 
which then means you won't have to take it off. Obviously, check your bushes, check your ball joints, um, check everything you can. I'll show you through this one because this one's got the rose joints on, so I can give you a little demonstration on that um, because that's the most likely to fail. Um, and also the front arms on this are absolutely knackered, so I'll show you them because they're hilarious. Um, but, but basically, that's one way of doing it. You can treat the rust and then afterwards, you can put like a lano guard or like an anti-rust or an under seal or something that's basically gonna barrier it going forwards. Why they don't do it from factory, I'll, I'll never know, but some do, most manufacturers don't. I guess it's a costing thing. Um, but I'm gonna be doing a whole separate video for sort of winter preparation, under sealing, lano guards and all the different kinds of things you can use. All very simple, all can be done on the floor, at home, on axle stands, nice and safe. Um, and it's, it's definitely well worthwhile because if you're gonna keep the car longevity, do you know what I mean? No more salty winters, don't have to worry about it. I use all my cars all year round. So for me, it's really important to have them protected. Um, what are we on now? So the other option, now this is the second option and probably the easiest for, for most of you. If your car, it may have been uh, advised on your MOT as corrosion, you may see a little hole appearing on one of your subframes or it just looks past it like there's more rust than metal then you may need to have it taken off. And if it's good enough, get it blasted, get it powder coated, put back on. Now, of course, powder coating is a great option because it's a good, strong barrier, especially if you get a decent quality powder coat that's made to be on extraneous parts that are gonna be underneath taking all the elements. Um, now, the other option to do, because obviously you can't just take it to a garage, put it on a ramp for a few days, because it's gonna cost them and they probably won't wanna do it, um, is to try and source your own parts. Now, of course, if you've got a garage you're gonna use and they're happy for you to bring your own parts, get them to put it up on there and give you a list of what they think you should replace. Um, and of course, check it yourself, have a look. I mean, even get a little screwdriver and poke it. If you can't poke a hole in anything, it's probably all right. Um, <laughs> technical, technical terms, poke a hole. Um, and then if you, can't, if you can or it's damaged or it looks beyond and you wanna get a spare set, then get yourself a spare set. Um, most of them are similar. If it's a Quattro, um, the rear end is predominantly the same across the board. Um, the arms, it depends whether you want to get adjustable arms or fixed arms, depending on whether you're going to lower your car in the future or not. But that's, that's I've got different videos to that. I'll link all of them down in the description because I've already done all the bushes and everything on this. Um, and you want to get yourself a um, spare set there. I could recommend a few breakers that I would recommend would give you a good quality new set which are usable, which then you can take to get shot blasted, take to get powder coated. And then when you go to the garage, you can just say, look, I want you to fit these bits for me. Because to be honest, rear ends, if you get a nice one, as in like, like this arm, this trailing arm here, which isn't too bad, you're probably only gonna pay for a rear end, maybe 100, 150 pounds. And if yours is good coming off, then you can always sell yours or get yours powder coated and then sell on so someone doesn't have to worry about that process. Um, so you'll definitely get your money back. And of course, if you need new, then you need, you need new anyway, so that's fine. Um, don't worry about buying um, used genuine. As long as it comes from a reputable seller and it's of good quality, the genuine stuff is gonna be as good as any other aftermarket stuff, so don't worry about that. Um, the front end, however, there's a few different variants. Now, whether you'll be able to get them or not, I don't know. Let me put some gloves on. Um, on the front arms, there's two options. Now, this is an early car, it's a V-Ridge, which means it has the earlier front arms. Now, all TTs, the Quattro, have cast arms, these ones, and they have two bushes. Usually, this bush fails more than this one um, because it's just it does the most movement. Um, but these are relatively easy. You can buy these brand new secondhand. You can get the bush, um, bushes, genuine aftermarket poly bushes if you want more performance and they just push out. Now the earlier arms like on this one actually has a smaller bush. Um, most people, if you've ever looked at these, they have cookbot arms adjustments, which is like a metal sleeve, which gets pressed into there to make the bush that goes in smaller, thus having more, less flex, which means slightly better feel. Um, and these ones you can buy uh, variant ones as whether you get ca uh, caster adjustment and all different kinds of stuff. But arms are relatively easy. You can get these 10 a dozen. I've got two sets down on the floor. So if you want to borrow a set and then return them at a later date, I have them. Ball joints, I'd just recommend getting new ones. They're maybe 20 pound a pair. Um, this isn't a massively cheap process, but you're obviously reinstalling the longevity of your car. And you're doing this because you want to keep it long haul, especially if you're doing a full build. Now with the front subframe, there is, believe it or not, there's three variants. One or two are harder to get than the rest. 
Now this is a 2251 off a coupe. So the first thing to mention is the coupe and the roadster are different. Now the roadster, unfortunately I don't have one here, but I'll show a picture on the screen for you now, has two diagonal braces to support um, the structure of the car and to give for extra bracing off the top here. So those are quite obvious to find. Very simple, very easy to find, uh, as in, for, for tell the difference. Um, so 225 ones, they are different between the coupe and the roadster. Now, actually this, there's four different variants, excuse me. Um, <laughs> now the V6 one is completely different to the 2251 or the 181 or whatever Quattro turbo one there are. They're different, not by much, but basically on the underside of a Quattro one, again, of course, I will show you a photograph. They have a raised square bit here with a thread on both sides, which allows for the metal under tray to be fixed up with a bolt. Now the 225s have a plastic under tray, which just clips into all different fixings underneath. The V6 has physical um, welded in point, threaded points to hold that because it is a lot heavier. Um, so the 3.2 uh, and the 180 are both different. Now, of course, which means the Roadster one for a V6 is different to the Roadster one of the 225 and is also different to the coupe version of the V6. So there's four different types of subframe to try and get hold of. So we'll go through them quickly. I'll put a picture up and put the names next to them. So you've got 225 coupe, completely plain subframe. You've got a 225 or a 180 Quattro Roadster, which has those two diagonal braces. Then you move on to the V6 Coupe, which has the two raised mounting points for your subframe welded in. And then you're going to the 3.2 Roadster V6, which has the cross braces and those two mounted points for the under tray. So, like I said, this one is a bit tatty. There's no holes. This is all superficial rust and would be perfect to go back onto another car. Um, of course, while it's off, get all the threads checked. If you're going to look at buying some, I would recommend, if you can, going to look for yourself because if you get one posted and it's a bit rough, especially if it's off eBay, just to be safe. Um, but I, like I said, I can recommend a couple of really good breakers who will send you plenty of pictures and are good, honorable people. Um, same with rear trailing arms, you can buy those if you need to, um, if you want to get them powder coated or whatever. But to be honest, with these, let me get the GoPro set up and I will show you. So on the trailing arm, you've got a couple of bushes. This is the main one, and this is the one that's bolted up underneath the car. I'll show you that quickly for anyone who's not seen it. So this is bolted up here. If you can see it there and that bolts into the body. This one is absolutely disgusting. Um, but basically, a lot of the time, if yours is really bad, you may also need the bracket that holds it as well. This one's actually quite a nice condition. But this bush usually fails, and you'll get what is explained like, um, it feels like the car's moving side to side. You get like a loose rear end, which is never good. Um, so that may need replacing. And the other things that need replacing are these rose joints. Now these ones are in nice condition, they're a little bit stiff, um, but they still have nice free movement, which if you can keep your rose joints, I would definitely recommend it because they are a very superior bush, um, very good for performance and everything and, and longevity, but you do need to remove this metal clip here. Uh, let see if I can do it with a Phillips screwdriver, I can't. But basically you remove that clip there, look. And then what you'll do is you get uh, something not sharp, prise this rubber away, and then put grease in and make sure there's no rust spots. Providing that's the case, then that bush is still good to go. They are serviceable and definitely worth doing. I'll put that on in a minute. Um, but that is what is worth checking because if they fail and get seized and stuck, then there is a very good possibility that you will um, snap a rear trailing arm, which of course is a dangerous and B not what you want. Um, so that's kind of what I would do with those. Um, but yeah, so I've had quite a lot of people message me in the past and say, look, I've been to garages. I want to have my, my rear end or front end or whatever, refurbished, powder coated, painted, whatever. And a lot of garages have turned away. Now I've got a couple of people that may do the job because they have multiple ramps or they're specialists in their field. 
um, and they probably won't mind doing a rebuild. I'll put their details down in the description. The main two are CJ Mechanical and Bryn BWSTT. Bryn, of course, if you watch any YouTube, you'll have seen him as the other handsome, well, sturdy man with a small beard who often gets confused for me, apparently. Um, <laughs> But he usually will take on a rebuild or he'll have the spares or, or, or he'll be able to do something with you. Um, for sure, maybe he comes to your strips it all off, you get it rebuilt and then comes back and puts it back on again. Um, and CJ Mechanical, again, both midlands -y based um, But like I said, other garages may do it, but you may have to go down the route of sourcing other spares. I'll put down a link to a few people. If you can't find any, then drop me a message and I'll quite happily forward you their details to contact them because they are... Um, probably the best breakers in the country um, because it's always nice to find someone who's reliable tests and sends you stuff they, they actually pictured rather than just any old crap um, and I hope you found this helpful because I obviously want to keep these cars on the road as long as I can if you can get to it before it comes to a point where you need to remove it amazing because you can do all the work on the floor at home make sure you've got your PPE your goggles your ear defenders because you don't rust in your eye you don't want probably under seal in your eye, um, safety first. But it is a great way of doing it. If you can do it on the car, perfect. You can get to it and it's quite a nice satisfying job. You've done it yourself and you know in the, in the future it's gonna be really, really important. Also, while you're there, do your inner arches. I'll stick the old GoPro on again and have a look. Because again, this is really important. Um, this one isn't too bad actually, as it goes, but mainly just dirt but give it a good clean. There's little clips here, like that clip there is really rusty. Um, they obviously get really bad under here where they get a load of crap in them. The front's the same. But while you're there, do all of it, check your brake pipes, get, get all this under sealed and coated because obviously this is under a splash guard, but look at all the dirt that's still up here. Over time, they rust and rot. And look at, I mean, there's a little bit there. You could quite easily treat that and then that would be good for another 20 years. It's a shame the car's not, but. <laughs> um, but that is definitely my approach on the way of I would do it either. Treat it if it's not too bad. And if it is, then try and get yourself a, like a swap out kit. Um, I will try and source all the parts of it, but like I said, with four subframes, it's a bit of a nightmare. They are a bit more expensive for the V6 and the Roadster because they're not as common. And obviously when a percentage of them fail, it is a little bit more expensive to get. Um, I hope you've found that interesting. I hope you found it helpful to some people because I know a couple of people have messaged me this week about uh, similar scenarios. So hopefully that will help you going forwards. Um, if you appreciate this channel and you, you take value in the content, then please, if you want to, of course, um, you can join our Patreon and support the channel and the community, make more great videos, keep the lights on and keep the rain away. <laughs> it is dark outside and raining, so the ideal combination. But um, all the details for that will be down in the description. Go check it out, really appreciate that. Thank you for everyone who's already donated. You are absolute legends. I have messaged every single one of you. And of course, everyone who hasn't donated as well, if you've got any questions, drop me a message. You know where I am, I'm on most socials and trawling through most Facebook TT pages all the time. So no doubt you'll see me there. But until next time, guys, bye for now.